Here's how you can use the 3D camera tracker in After Effects to create a really cool scene like this. Alright, so I'm in After Effects right now and we have this aerial shot of a city and we're going to drag this into a new composition just like so. So the first thing we're going to do is 3D camera track it. So what we're going to do is right click on our layer, go to track and stabilize and go to track camera. Once that clicks, it's going to analyze. Once it's done analyzing, it will solve the camera and they'll give you a bunch of these points here. First, I'm going to drag and select uh, maybe these kind of things. If you just click and drag, you can click a few different points. And if you right click and you hit create solid and camera, what that's going to do is create a solid right where those points are in space. So now we have a perfectly tracked solid right where that building is. And that is going to be really helpful for whenever we're trying to throw in a meteor and hitting you know that building. Now we know where that is in Z space. So if you notice, we have a camera and that solid in 3D space. So then we could even do it for stuff over here, like this building. We can select a few of these and hit create solid. And then that will create a solid right in there uh, that's in 3D space and tracked perfectly to the building, look at that. So let's start adding in meteors. Okay, so we're gonna use, in our apocalypse pack, there are um, some small meteors, and I think I'm gonna use small meteor too. Yeah, I like that one. Okay, so we're gonna drag that one in, and this is from our apocalypse pack. Go check that out. I kinda want this to hit this building, right? And then we'll add like some a little particle explosion and stuff like that. So I'm gonna play forward and show you that this is not tracked in, right? The reason why it's not tracked in is because this is a 2D layer. Anything that you wanna be tracked into the space after you've tracked with the 3D camera tracker needs to be a 3D layer. So the way to do that is click on this thing that looks like a cube in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, then if we play forward, it's kind of doing something wonky, but that's just because it's placed wrong in the space. Now, if you didn't see that cube in that le bottom left corner, make sure you go to toggle switches and modes. You might be here. All you have to do is just hit that button and you'll find it. Okay, so now let's solve the issue of the meteorite being a little bit wonky here. It's, it's, it's moving in 3D space, but it's not in the exact position that it needs to be. Now, there are a few different ways to get it into the space. Uh, the position that we want. See, now that we have that solid that we first made, we know that that's the general position in Z space that this meteorite needs to be in. So we're gonna take that uh, solid, click on it and hit P. And right there we have a uh, three coordinates, which is the X, Y, and Z coordinates. And the Z is what we wanna know here. So if we go into the small meteor two and open up its positions property, by going to uh, hitting P, you can just copy this and then paste that. Now it's gonna be really small because we're pushing back it in Z space, right? Okay, so now let's scale up this guy. And now when we play forward, he's now in the right spot you know it's right it's right in the it's in the right spot it looks like it's moving properly uh now let's just place it and make sure it looks good so i'm going to scale it up even more i'm going to position it and i'm going to move it down in the timeline and i want it to hit right there at the top perfect so now we have Meteor, boom. Now we're gonna have to stop it from like keep going. So a uh, good way of doing that um, is just uh, masking off that section. So I'm just gonna uh, click on the pen tool up here, mask around where it would disappear to, and kind of just masking off that area. Now it's actually flipped, so it's we're masking in an area, but we want to subtract that out. So if you hit M on your keyboard, you can go to subtract 
and that will subtract it out. And if you hit F on your keyboard as well, you can feather that just a hair and that will look a little bit better. So now when we press play, it's hitting the building and it looks pretty good. And these solids that are here are just for reference. You don't need them in the seed. I just use it because it's cool to know where the position in Z space is, right? And just copying and pasting that over to something that needs to be in that general area is really helpful. Uh, but you can just turn off the visibility on them. They, they really are only there for reference. So let's turn them off. Okay, now, now that we've added the meteorite going in there, I kind of want to add uh, some, like an impact, right? So I'm going to add, also in the Apocalypse Pack, the Meteor Explosion Impact. And it's just like one of those cool, like, sparky hits, you know, almost like a Roland Emmerich film, uh, you know, you know, where everything's very, like, big and explosion-y, because we want to make big films here at Big Films. All right. So, uh, again, click on that little thing that makes it a cube, which means it's a 3D layer. And now let's just do the same thing. Let's copy from that uh, purple solid we have, that position, and in the Z position, which is the last coordinate, paste it. And then it's gonna be really small. We're gonna place it and scale it up accordingly, just like so. And we might actually have to move that so whenever it hits, it's actually impacting at the time. All right, but it looks pretty cool. And also I might, uh flip the image of this. So an easy way to flip an image is just to go to right click, hit transform, and then uh, flip horizontally. Uh, and then you might have to reposition a little bit, but there it's now flipped and it will fit the, uh, the explosion a bit better. I'm gonna scale that down a little bit more. Uh, one thing you might notice is like, look at, see how this uh, little smoke trail is in front of this. Uh, if you move that below the layer, like in a regular 2D function, that doesn't work because it's a 3D layer and it's not really using the stacking uh, in the composition to tell if it's in front of something. It's tell uh, the 3D, the fact that it's 3D is telling if something is in front or not. So a way to make this impact uh, in front of this trail here is just by... Um, pushing this forward in Z space and see when I do that, uh, it's now in front of it and just, it just needs a little bit, uh, to be in front, but that is something to note. Uh, and another thing I want to add is the explosion, uh, the ground impacts, uh, on top of that roof. And so we're just going to bring in a ground impact. That's also in the apocalypse pack. And this is just for, that interaction, right? So we're gonna just drag and drop that into our timeline and then again, make it a 3D layer, go to P and then paste in that number we had before. And we're going to scale that down and position it. And then we're just gonna make sure that it's timed out properly to when it impacts. And I also probably will have it come in right when it hits. So it's just like, bam like that. And also I might mask out. So like you can see a little bit of the edge there. Easy way to fix that. Let's just mask around where the building is and maybe feather out the mask a little bit, just like that. And then it will pop right in there and explodes and you get that high impact. One way to make this fit a little bit more is just, you don't even really need to do this, but you can add a Lumetri color to that and see everything's kind of blue around it. Just make it slightly more blue and that's gonna just fit a little bit more. So I just lowered the temperature of it uh, just a little bit. And now when we play it back, it looks a lot better. Look at that, it looks so cool. All right, so now what I wanna do is um, go in and add that building destruction that is behind something. And this is also something important that you might wanna know, is that you can actually use these solids that we've created, like this track solid, to create a pretty helpful mask to mask away things, to put things behind other things. Uh, so let's go in and go into our destruction pack and add in 
I don't know. Let's add in this guy right here, this building collapsing over to the side. We're gonna drop it in and we're gonna scale it down. And we're also going to make this a 3D layer, uh, but then we're just going to copy and paste the position, uh, the Z position from the green one that was on this building because I kind of want this building to be behind that building. So I'm gonna copy and paste that into this positions like so and it's gonna be really small and I actually even might push it back even more and then scale this up like so and now when we play forward it looks like it's it's moving appropriately we even might have to push this back further in Z space and a cool thing is we we can even go into our camera tracker and say, and let's uh, let's solo it out here. Um, we can even say that we're like, okay, the building would be around this area. We can add another solid or even a null layer. Uh, let's add a null layer for fun. And when we add that null layer, it's gonna be really tiny. You can barely even see it, but it's, it's right there. Uh, but we can also go, okay, copy that uh, Z position and then paste that onto that's building's Z position. And then when we look at it, it should be animated properly uh, with the correct Z space. Um, now let's just place it well. So I think I'm just going to do that effect again where I flip it horizontally. I'm gonna scale it up so we're not seeing the edges or anything. And I'm probably going to push this further along when the building's kind of like hitting the side here. And I might even scale this up even more. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking I'm thinking something like that. Uh, the problem is that it's, uh, it's in front of everything when it needs to be behind something. So this is a really cool way to mask things out. So let's take the green solid that we made, which we know is perfectly aligned to this building and let's scale this up let's scale it up just like so just to just to fit the area of the building uh, then we're going to just del uh, just um, turn off the visibility and then make sure your track solid is clicked and then make the pin tool and turn off roto bezier and then we're just going to follow the edge of the building. So now we have a green uh, mask around that building, right? Uh, and what we can do is hit M on your keyboard, mask the path, so click that little stopwatch and that will animate its path. Click that and then go to the very end and then just adjust all these points to fit again. So now as it goes through time, it's actually masking to the building and it's pretty solid. So then what we can do is take our building and uh, I've soloed everything. So I'm going to turn off the soloing. We could take that building and we're going to take that track solid and we're going to hit toggles and switches and modes. And that will bring up your track mat uh, selection. So if we take our building and we say, okay, let's pick whip this to the solid and then it's going to be like okay I'm going to be just in that area which is not what we want and to flip that you just click this little invert button and there you go and then we can play forward and it's behind the building right now we also have this other building but I think I'm just going to easily mask that out by just going to the building and uh, let's turn it off again and then let's just mask around just that regular building and then animate that path again, just like we did. And we, and because it's 3d tracked, it's really easy because we just needed two uh, mask, you know, animation throughout that entire thing. We didn't have to animate it frame by frame, you know? So doing something like this does save time. Um, and now we're just going to subtract out that. Okay. So now we've created 
a building running into another building and a meteorite exploding onto it. it looks so cool and for the rest of the shot what i did was i just sort of added more meteors and more of this i just duplicated all these effects right so i could add small meteor three place it in turn it 3d and i'm gonna position it a little bit further down in the the place and you know, it's really just at that point, now that you know these fundamentals, it's really just trying to play it with it with like Legos and, and really have fun. That's pretty much all I did. And then I added some explosions, some cracks on the building, just to have fun with it. And that's how the 3D camera tracker is so powerful is now you can click spots and go, okay, I know for pretty sure that this is going to be pretty accurate. Because if you did this all in 2D, you'd have to track all of these different points individually and all you have to do is like click a few buttons and you're done and that was it please hit subscribe because we got more tutorials coming at you thank you so much have a good day